seven. We're in the dungeon again, just the two of us. It's Paulo. I'm Foy. And this is another episode of Hold My Whistle. How you been, buddy? Oh, dude, it's it's been a week, man, you know? We're back in the groove of things. You know, just, just the two of us, like you said. Josh uh-huh. couldn't make it tonight. He had some dinner plans with Scotty NASCAR McClure. Oh, dude, Pick, uh, Pit Boss. I think my... Oh, is that his nickname? Pit I, Boss? No, I'm, crew, I'm, chief. crew Chief. Is crew that, Chief. I think Crew Chief is... His new nickname. He was. He wanted to be Short Track. <laughs> I, uh, I came up with Short Track, That's but we got to come up with a nickname for for Scotty. They're having dinner today, and a little family bonding time. I, I'm always good with that. Yeah, you know, I like. Actually, let's talk about family bonding and, and, and dinner. You brought. You know, we're being healthy since the clinic happened. Trying to at least. You and know, you know, you're, you're getting your recipe book open. You're, uh, you're doing that healthy recipe. Yeah, stuff. The, the wife. Uh, the wife ordered the. Meals to order. It's like uh, fret, not fresh and easy, or oh, so, okay. something like that. But they, it, it, it comes in a box, family size almost. Yeah, it, no, it is, it is family portions. It comes, all the ingredients come in a box with the recipe. And but like, you know, I've been cooking. You've been cooking. You've been in the grill, and like you're pushing it on me. At first, I wasn't ready for it. Last week, you know, I know I was already eating clean. I'm trying to stay off the dairy, right? Yeah. But you're like, hey, bro, I made corn chowder, and I'm like. Maybe I made corn chowder two nights ago. I thought you were filling the corn chowder. I feel like you're, you know, maybe you had a craving. I I didn't know you were doing this. I I didn't know this was the. the, the, I do enjoy corn chowder though. Like if it's ever at a restaurant, it's not bad. I'm gonna try it. Corn is a sneaky, delicious food. Yeah, in multiple ways, it is. You don't. You look at it. You just can't digest it. You gotta pass it up because you see something else. But when you actually eat corn, I love corn. It's great. Like people are like, the elote has blown up in the last five years. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I hate mayonnaise. You are not, but they, they use other stuff. Yeah. You, 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 you hate sour cream as well? Oh, yeah. Right. It's in the same family. Yeah, I don't do that shit. No, but corn is sneaky good. Corn chowder is a great one. Corn on the cob, of course. Sweet corn. Sweet corn cream is good. Of, I like cream of corn. The cream of corn that we had on that draft day. Draft day? Yes, when in Ken's. In Ken's Fantasy League. Oh, um, it was we, like a succotash, kind of. Yes, no, it, yes, it was like a succotash. And that's what we had for our fantasy draft. And yeah. she made it in a big copper skillet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the the corn. Did you have the corn at Lone Braze in, uh, when we were in Big Spring? We went to Lone Braze with the guys from Foul Reality. From right? Foul Reality. I don't know if I had the corn. I had salad bar and I had something else. But was it in the salad bar? No, it wasn't in the salad bar. It was like a side. Lone Braze. Lone Braze. West Texas. Get some. <laughs> if you're ever salad in Big bar. Spring, Lone Braze got some bomb ass chili corn. I'll tell you, I. I've never seen more tea poured than right. at Lone Brace. Oh, no. You should have been... Uh, when we went to Arkansas... <laughs> when we were, Just tea. When we were in Arkansas um, this past month, we uh, we stayed at a lodge, Busted Duck. Busted Duck Lodge. It was in Augusta, Arkansas, ran by a guy named Buster Cooper. Great dude. Great operation. Oh, that's... We follow him now. Yes. We follow him. Dude, the dude's a man. He's hilarious. Good old boy, you know, yeah. great hospitality, great organization, great op- outfit, you know. And so what it is, is it's a lodge. And they prepare your meals for you. You wake up. So they, they had steaks? We had New Those York. pictures are insane. We had uh, ribeyes one night that were fucking awesome. Uh, he did, however, cook a couple of steaks a way that I would never do. He put mayonnaise on them. Okay. To get that. Crispy. Yes, I think I've heard that with something else, but that's just. Did you try it? Uh, absolutely fucking not. Who was it? Meat in the that meads. Snuck in mayonnaise. The meat snuck how mayonnaise. How did she? How do? You, how does someone sneak mayonnaise into a meal for a boy? Uh, she put it on the outside of the bread and toasted it. Oh, grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. Grilled cheese with to- yeah, dude. Mayo grills well. Well, because it's all oily. Well, yeah. It's all just fucking... So it's cooked. Egg whites and... It's cooked, though. Yeah, but it's still mayonnaise. So, but you like... But you... But, so what's really in mayonnaise that's bugging you? It's just the taste. It's the taste. So if you don't know it's there... I I have a pretty good taste but for... But it's like salt and egg. Yeah, it's still gross and to me. And a little me. bit of lime stuff. It's still gross to me. It's already too late. It's like it can't save you. Like, if you saw it made and... Yeah, no. It was grilled first in your life, and they're like, no, we eat it raw. No, no. And we slice it on cold sandwiches. No. Or smear it. Nope, but oh, uh, man. What? so I've been making these uh, pre pre packaged. Oh yeah, dinners. let's talk about that um, hospitality, friendship, bonding. Yeah, he um, 
He had to, you know, there was breakfast laid out in the morning. He had, he called these things like breakfast cups, but they were really like frittatas. He made uh-huh. frittatas oh, in cupcake, like cupcake, cupcake uh-huh. things, and they were fucking bomb. How many did you eat? I just had one. You, you were still hungry. Um, no, I had a honey bun. Okay, and then I gave a cup of coffee. Hun- this is hunting meals. This, you this, you know what's awesome about hunting? You think like, hey, I'm hanging out with the guys. I'm going to be in the cold. You know what happens? You get so excited that you're not hungry. No, my big reason for not eating before the hunt is uh-huh. I don't want to have to take a shit. You don't want to take a shit? Because you don't, Yeah, we're in the middle of a field, there's no trees for miles, and once the sun's up, or if the light, it gets light, it's hard to go take a shit, especially when you're in all white. We're in give, me your, give, give me the worst case scenario that you personally, I've, I've seen people trip out, you know what I mean? Like, or catch people. When you're camping, and the shit comes on you, you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. So we've seen hilarious stuff. The Regero one is my favorite. Oh, dude, that's the best. You know, but... That happened to someone else. That's I want to know what happened to you. The worst episode for me? Yes. <clears throat> All right, so this is back when I was running. You know, this okay. was high school. Okay. So I was at Eddie's house, and I went I went for a jog, and I was going down. Um, so you were working out, and you weren't regular? Um, no, I, I, don't, I don't know what it was, but I went running, and I was going down towards Chalk Hill past uh, Hans Christian Anderson Park, and I made a, yep. a right on uh, Friedensburg Canyon. Uh huh. And because we were going to go up and over the big hill, Alice Allen back to Eddie's. Okay. So I made it to halfway down Friedensburg, and then I got the rumble in the jungle, and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to make it. I, I was caught. Um, yeah. You know? <laughs> I had. You're like, I can't even take a step. I, there's no way I was going to turn around and make it back. And it was wet. It's, it's not like one of these. Like hey, I, it wasn't. It wasn't a hamburger. It wasn't clean. This isn't a hamburger. It, was, it wasn't clean. <laughs> so naturally, it's like I was wearing a good shirt, so I wasn't gonna tear the sleeves off. Oh yeah, you're jogging in style. Yeah, I know it. So uh, you know, I pull off into the woods. A good thing about Friedensburg is there's okay, a lot there's of trees, foliage and hanging out, a lot of places to go. So I manage my way down into the woods, do my business, and you know, I uh, proceed to use my socks. Right, and said so that that's what happens. So I use my socks to wipe. And then I finish the run, and I get back. And that's been, dude. The marathon runners are these twenty four hour runners. They they'll run and shit. Yeah, that's just oh, insane. it's the worst. You're ashy as hell. Something just fell from your forehead. I saw that, dude. Yeah, that's crazy. It's trickle down effect. Um, but yeah, that's my that's oh. my worst. And then I got back, and everybody's like, "Where the fuck are your socks?" Well, oh, I had to take a shit about like a mile <laughs> yeah. and a half back. I ain't hiding it. I've done. Look, it, I've never hesitated. Like. To take a shit, you have to go, dude. You have you to. You gotta go. do something, and I. You, and so this is kind of I'm kind of going back on what I'm saying. It wasn't the worst shit that I had to take in public. And sometimes I've I've been okay. It's been stressful sometimes, but I found a way always. You know what I mean? But this affected me. And this is why it's the worst one. It's our, actually our camping trip. We're on the rocks. You know, oh, if you want to take a shit, the hike. You to gotta the top. hike to the top, and that's a brutal hike, right? Especially I, I, if you have to and shit. I've done it, and I've done it. But we oh, multiple TP. times. Yeah, no problem. But you know what affected me is that we walked out there, and someone free, forgot to bring out the toilet paper. Ooh. I didn't have to take a shit that day. I was okay. But our big dog, old Big Lou, has to take a shit. And he's like, I got nothing to like wipe my ass with. And you know what affected me? I had to make my shirt cut off. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and then he, I think he went up again. Or someone else did, and then I turned my pajama pants into shorts. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you remember that? Yes. So, but it, that and that was the thing, like with the rocks, though, because you're in the eastern Sierras, and right by Mammoth, right by Mammoth, fifty miles south of Mammoth. Ah, uh, not even like not even like right eight. Maybe. You might have to drive the fifteen if you're by the lake where we camp around. Well, you take Benton's and then, Crossing, and, and, and then you're like five miles away from Mammoth. Yeah. Well, yeah, you might be right, fifteen miles because Benton's Crossing. It's like, and it's Tom's it's, place. It's it's directly across the highway from Tom's place on Highway. F- uh, 395? 395. No, Tom's place is back a little farther. It's Crawley Village. It's right across the way. Is it Crawley? Oh, that's right. The nice little cabins right there. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're right. So, yeah. God, those were the But days. that affected me. That Did affected, it? Oh, dude. Louis, it, you know, I've gone with you, but Louis's been the best stories I've had from Crawley. You know, we've had some awesome times. Oh, collectively. the best. And, you know. It's, it's the only time I can say I beat up Louis. I've. It's 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 sad because those days are gone. We'll, we'll never have those we'll again. We'll go with, not not there like that. It, it'll it'll never happen but again. We'll take our all, kids out there. We're all we're soon. all young and having a good time, drinking a shit ton, catching a lot of fish. Right. Just the, the fish won't be the same. Nothing the will space be. And nothing. Will be, nothing. Nothing's the same. 
it's different. And, you know, it's one of those things that you we can't... We caught it at the right time. Yeah, we, we had a good run. We had, like, a five, six-year, like, And it was awesome like, what run. are you guys doing? I'm catching these. Mm-hmm. What? Lord, yeah. Look how many. We're, we're limited out on three-pound trout, like, minimum three-pound trout. Yeah, and you know what? You have to work for it. It's never really that easy. No, unless you're Matt Pedersen and get up at 1030 and come out and catch your I totally turned feet. into Matt, but that was my fault. I turned Matt into that monster. Yeah, you did. But oh well. Oh, I don't need to get up early because we'd always get up at I'd be five. like, I'm on vacation. You see, me and Matt work, and you were working great, but you you kind of always are down 100% for whatever you're doing that weekend. I'm 100% all right. in. So me and Matt are like, hey, we just finished bartending. We're working at a restaurant. And yeah, it's it's Wednesday morning or Tuesday morning. We got we, we stayed there for five days. That's not good. You know, those, the, the weeks we used to, you know, the time that we stay, spent there. Yeah, dude, it was. was special. It was great times. Yeah. It's and you know we've tried to get it back and invite everybody. It just doesn't work out. You but know, we I think but all the friends are back in town. They are, but it's hard to get away. I know. Oh, I think we plan it well enough. I want to get something together. Oh, we can try. I, mean, I know because even like Bulls back in town. Uh, shout out to the Bulls, number ten. Number ten, Brian Bull. I know he, he. I see him once in a while, and I heard you guys saw, saw, had Super Bowl together. I was jealous. Yeah, he came by. It was nice and good. Good to hang out with him. Uh-huh. I haven't seen him in a while. Um, but you know, someone we haven't seen in a while. We saw him at the clinic. You know, our buddy Cody Warning. Oh, former O line coach Cody Warning. Yes, I think he's a uh, physical therapist in training still. Who knows? But because he, well, he, he's he's he, an expert. Yes, at Turkish getups. If you do that, I'm pretty sure you'll become champion. There's a couple of things you could do in life. You could eat Wheaties like Michael Jordan and be a champion. But if you're Cody Warning, you do Turkish getups perfectly. Well, well, and, and the real important part is the hip bridge. Hip bridge into the reverse lunge into <laughs> some bullshit. So he's the ex-coach. We don't see him for a while. He's an in-shape head. You know, that's his thing. And he brings over a bottle of Gentleman Jack to the hotel room. But we're already kind of toasted and we've been drinking just normal Jack. And so by the end of the weekend, I got left a whole bottle of Gentleman Jack. And so we're enjoying it today. Yeah, that's going to lead us into our whiskey time. Oh, yeah. You know, we thought... Whiskey River. Whiskey River. If you haven't seen our whiskey time, I love the music I picked for that video. Oh, dude, that was a great job. Yeah. And Very the timing of the, of the... It's a little long in the tooth, but our... Well, we got to cut it short and... Well, whatever, dude. It was our first video. Yeah. It's cool. Check we're, it out. We're working on our second video. It's it's in the works. But whiskey time. Yes. Gentleman Jack. Gentleman Jack. Limited edition. From Cody Warning, you know... What do you got to say? I've seen the bottle all the time. It kind of looks like a belt buckle. Gentleman Jack. All right. You, you're you not a fan 100%. No, what, what, I'm, I'm not. Your a uncle big... loved this stuff. He used to take it camping. I on those trips. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a big fan of Gentleman Jack. I'd rather drink regular Jack. Double. 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 Mellowed, mellowed Tennessee whiskey. Oh. Well, anyways. Limited edition. The lad, Joshua McClurg, uh, mm-hmm. he, he looked up on a website whiskeys for old fashions and this one was highly ranked boom on on the list for old fashions my, you made my wife one i did yes and sean hasn't made a drink for us in a while you know with with the emergence of josh on the show he's kind of stepped into he, my it, barman he, role. oh man i don't know if like he picked that this to be a challenge but he came in and it would look competitive he comes into the kitchen bro he, he's got grabbing things he knows where stuff is i was like hey, here's the brown sugar mm-hmm. <laughs> and he'd get down but he shook and I and I enjoyed it. It was something new. I'm really enjoying this gentleman Jack cocktail. Are you? I am. I am enjoying it. It's keeping me warm. You know, we got the. It's a little bit chilly outside. You got the beanie on. Yeah, I've been wearing it all day. You know, got a, got a little sprinkle today. But gentleman Jack, it, it 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 doesn't have the finish that we have enjoyed from the better stuff we've drank. Mm-hmm. But it comes off with a great, nice little. Hey, I'm here. It's got a ton of flavor. Yeah, it, it's it's too sweet for me. But I, I, I yeah. I'm not. It doesn't do it for me. You know. This to me goes towards the the bottom. That far low. Yeah. It's, How close to the muzzle flash? Oh, it's way it's heads and tails better than muzzle flash. But in terms of making it into an old fashioned or a cocktail, just nah, it doesn't do it. You've missed a couple of whiskeys. That that's what I think has hurt you the worst. I missed. You the, went back to Buffalo Trace. I was here for Buffalo Trace. Number two. Yeah, I had I had one of those. Okay. I the missed, Sazerac. I missed the Sazerac. Right. I wasn't here for the Maker's Forty Six. But I've had makers. We, I, know, I thought we did it earlier, yeah, and we had, I mean, we did we did it some more bullet. You can't go wrong with bullet. Bullet's been just a just a champ to us. Bullet is according to this website. Bullet is the number one old fashioned bourbon to use. Well, that was referenced to a referencer, but it is one of the better ones for yeah. sure. 
I, you know, and then Breakers is still number one. Breakers is me. crushing, yeah. But, uh, but yeah. I, I still, I want to go back. I want, I want to get a bottle of Dickel again. Um, maybe, maybe try the other one. Which one? Because we've done the small we've batch. Done two. We've done eight and twelve. I think. Uh, I think we like the original. Maybe we'll I, go back I, to the original. I like the original. We haven't yeah. had the original in a while. Or George loved that. You know, Scott McClure drank the muzzle flash, no problem, and then laughed at Dickel. He's like, ah. And I was like, oh man, kind of jacked it. We we were praising the Dickel. I wonder if we still have it in high regard. Uh, I I'm gonna go out on the limb and say we do. Yeah. yeah. What and yeah, and they've all. This is like strictly with the cocktail too. But what's quick? I think this is about. I think our vote is both. Because we drink it straight after we have one cocktail. Yeah. And we, we still enjoy it and we're talking about it. It's pretty good. Yeah, but Whiskey Time has been doing a really fun thing. So uh, we were talking about our second video and, and, and potential locations. You know, Paulo's at the barbershop again, sitting in Hugo's shirt today. Paulo had to get a cut. Got to get a cut, looking long, fresh. Little long. Well, only the sides. They say looking long in, uh, in the ears. I say looking long in the cul-de-sac. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to trim it up. Yeah, uh, but we're, we're you know we talk about the barbershop enough, and so I think later this month, before um, March Madness tournament or right in the middle of it, we do episode with Vic Leonish, get it set up over there. Pretty excited, and we'll do a whiskey time. We're gonna whiskey do a whiskey time. time there too. So any idea on the bourbon we're gonna use? Uh, I think we maybe get something barbershop, or we go big and get like something we haven't had yet. Just. You know, I, 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 I think we go like $60 whiskey. I'd hate to do a live whiskey time with shit whiskey. Shit whiskey. And then, well, you know who was there was our boy. Uh, he's the bartender here at Dose. Yeah. And I don't know. Trevor. And so I was like, why don't we have a bartender too? <laughs> and you can make us our, our, our favorite old fashioned, you know? So I was thinking that, like, but stuff like that. The barbershop was on fire today. You know what was my funniest? I'm going to uh, throw Vic under the bus for being one a gambler. Gambles all the time. Had no idea how a Super Bowl pool worked. And it was for March Madness. How do the yes. squares work? What? I, I don't get the square. Random? Dude, you fucking bet on everything. How do you <laughs> not know how squares work? He <laughs> bets on anything. But what was really stoked, too, I was sitting in Julio's chair, and he's trying to fundraise, and that's what the pool was for. He's got a, a team from Lompoc going to Nationals for soccer. Pretty cool. In, in, Hawaii. in Hawaii, yeah. Oahu. Oahu. Yeah, I mean, and what a great idea to fundraise for March Madness, the finals of March Perfect. Madness. I mean, you have a chance to win some money, and, you know, it's a square, so it's always a gamble. No and you know what. he's got, like, at both freaking barbershops. Yeah, and Probably. It, there's 100 squares, so you got a 1 in 100 chance to win, like, half times 1,000 bucks, finals 2,000 bucks. Right. 50 bucks a square, that's awesome. He doesn't know how it works. And he's like... Explain it to me again. He stops cutting some guy's hair. <laughs> yeah, he walks over he and we're like cutting. pointing it out to him. It was like oh. colored by numbers. Oh my gosh. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, watch the table. So we just had some technical difficulties. Hopefully you're coming in loud and clear with my voice. And we're back. Hey. <laughs> He's made some halftime adjustments. You know, in the first quarter, actually. First quarter adjustment. You know, we had... Uh, Something unplugged and probably sounded really. We're not technical guys. You know, we're we're. I think you were really impressed with what I just did. Yeah, I I, I grabbed the mouse. You totally I hit saw edit, it. share, split. It's like you know what the fuck you're doing. It's Paul. not bad. It's not bad. But we, I didn't know when we started, and we were coming up with some. You know, this it's so loose and so fun. I hope everyone has a good time listening to us. Yeah, we, but we just we we just hang out. We share some time together. We start talking. Sometimes we try to. Scripted a little bit. Sometimes we like to free ball. Unscripted today. Yeah, we're we're going unscripted. unscripted. We got a couple of, of talking points, but you know, we were talking about ma, our clean eating, Scotty, yeah, crew chief. We, uh, you know, it, to them, they don't even know the difference. That it oh, just took a, we took a five minute break in our life. Yeah, we and we to, hesitated. We had to think about: Are we gonna start over? Or are we just gonna keep fucking going? Right. We apologize for the shitty quality. Mm, of the first part. This is a special interruption. That's what. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, no, we we're talking about the barbershop in the pools and how it didn't work. But there's actually a big pool at our work that's a lot different that I'm taking huge interest in because something huge in my life is coming back. Oh, dude. One day in our earlier episodes, I had a Riding the Pine segment and I picked the TV show, HBO show, Game of Thrones because I just I was missing them last summer. When we first started the show, we should have had a season. It's been a year and a half. It's been a long time. Year and a half. My body was fixing for some Khaleesi, Breaker of Chains, and now that time is coming. 
April 15th. Mark it on your calendars. Game of Thrones. Final season. Who knows what the fuck's going to happen. But what's really interesting about our pool is it's a point system. And they have the list of characters. And if you get to choose how they die, you choose who they, how many, or who dies, if they die, and if they become a White Walker or if they just die. And whoever has the most points wins the pool. It's going to be tough because there's so many characters. Well, I think you have to get the people so who survive problems. is the first question. Who's, who is going to make it? You know? My opinion, Jon yes. Snow doesn't make it. You know? What about the sisters? Um, uh, Honestly, I think... I think Sansa makes it. Sansa? I know the other one will die victorious. Like a, she's gonna go she's like gonna, she's, she's a warrior. She's got she's got, got some she's yeah. got notches in her belt. She's got some shit in her neck. I like her character. You know who's your art? That's you know what? I think that's gotta be I, I wanna that get shit in your neck. Or some <laughs> kind of t shirt or slogan for Sean. Because it's my favorite one. It's a good one. Oh yeah. It's a good People, one. People who name someone else who's got shit in their neck. Josh McClurg. <laughs> got some shit in his neck. He's got some fucking shit in his motherfucking neck. I'll tell you what, that shit's cocked back. So, but yeah, my thing is, you always pick your friends. Game of Thrones. Well, how do you not pick your friends? I mean, well, who's who's your? Give me someone else in outdoor life who's got outdoor life. That's or, not my friend. Yes. Who? Oh God, outdoor life. That's not my friend. Shit in his neck. Who makes the shit in his neck list? Uh, they're pretty much my friends. Okay, who's the next person who's got shit in his neck? Next person, Tony. Tony yes, he, Tony's got oh a lot God. of shit in his All neck. All right, people who've been on the show, but it's our best friends. That's what we do. Yeah, and I mean, we got everyone's back. Exactly. I, you know, Josh and Tony. I'll always have your back. Always. So, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is on final season. Mm-hmm. How are you preparing for this? It comes out in so, like a month. I'm disappointed in myself because you have a year and a half to plan this out. Mm-hmm. You know, and I told Elise, I'm like, hey, we're gonna. Knock out these series slowly. Watch it casually, and now I'm fucked. We procre- we had kids in between. You know what I mean, yeah. This you're, is you're my behind the eight ball, right? Oh, now. for sure. And so you know, we're talking about it, and I'm going to have to get prepare myself. You're I've been have eating to put clean, work. you know, because I'm not running a sprint. I am running a Game of Thrones marathon, and I got how, what's what's the beginning date? April April fifteenth. I got. A little less than a month and a half. Yeah, like a month and a week. Right. Five weeks. It's called so, five and a half weeks. Can I knock out seven seasons? Uh, I started on Saturday, uh-huh. and I am on season four, episode 10. Now, we're talking in the barbershop, and I, you know, this is a thing. I, I want to see if people could do it. I want to see if, because there's got to be people out there. Some people are, did plan ahead and have been watching. You know, they got that HBO on demand. I'm proud of y'all. But if you don't, you have to really marathon. I could, I'm could. i going to say I could knock out all seven seasons of Game of Thrones. Are you going to try to do it? No, no, no. I can. I'm just I, gonna, I think we have to. I have to do it. You have to. I don't. I'm already. This is my second. Who's accepting the whole of whistle? Game of Thrones challenge. Marathon. Game of Thrones marathon. So I started on Sunday. Okay. So you could already start. Let's see how long it takes you from Sunday. Yeah, I'm almost to season five. My thing is, well, when, I can do you, do it. when do you watch? Um, I stay up late, you know? Right. I'll watch four or five episodes before I go to bed. And if I'm not flooring the next morning, or if I have nothing to do, I'll watch three or four episodes during that day. Right. The kids go to school. Is yeah. that what's awesome about school? Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're out of your hair in the midday? When you- that, and I watch it on my iPad, so I can watch okay. it anywhere. Okay, if but do you, you you don't feel that like I, boom when I, there's a dragon? It's like it's cool, I've but not never like on watched your TV. It on anything other than my iPad. Shut the fuck up! I swear to God. Oh wow! Like, I've always liked watching I that on a big screen. Watching it on my iPad. It's great on a big TV. I'm sure it is. I couldn't imagine what it's like on I, TV. I don't even watch TVs on my iPad. I don't know it. Or movies. Oh, that's all I do is watch yeah. it on my iPad. That's crazy. But yeah, Game of Thrones. So, uh, what are you looking forward to? Oh, closure. Closure, right? That's what I'm saying. I want to like, see how this motherfucker ends. Mm-hmm. I am so excited. Like, you want to see the good win? Honestly, I don't give a shit how it, who wins. What happened if, if it's What happened if it's a White Walker world? Dude, that would be fucking badass. It probably would be cool. It could in any way. I'd be okay with it. There, see, 
the the, the beautiful thing about how this show is, uh-huh. it's written in a way that it can go fucking one of a million different ways. For sure. And you can't be well, like, that's oh, what... no, this is going to happen. Oh, this is going to happen. Yeah, like even the author is like, I'm just going to stop. I can do it however the fuck I want. That's the attitude that this is written in. Yeah. We're just going to make it as cool as possible for TV. And it's fucking awesome. It's awesome. Like, so are you like, uh, who's your favorite character? Favorite character? Yes, right off the bat. Right off the bat, no questions asked. My favorite character is the Hound. He is the man. I love Like the him. mountain gets way more publicity because he's huge and he's an athlete or he's a power lifter or whatever he was. But see, The actual char- the second was, actor. He's yeah, the second he's actor. He's the second guy. So whatever, you know, but the hound. I love the hound. Is he's raw. Fucking, he's raw. He's he survives. Funny. He fucking kills people. Yes. I now, mean, oh, you know who I'm thinking of about funny, and he's he came on really late. He's a redheaded friend. He's in love with Brianna Tarth. Oh, uh, to- Torber half dude. That motherfucker is what? Sean, you're that? slipping, bro. Don't get Google that shit. Torben Halfbane. I'll go with that. Or Wolfbane? No, 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 stop it. You don't even know his fucking name. I don't even care. I know who he is. I watch. I, I watch the he, show. He's on the fucking Old Spice commercials. He is a, the Old Spice guy now. But no, he's a baller, dude. His his relationship <laughs> with Brienne of Tarth is no. But it's it's even classic. funnier. It's not even his him talking about Brienne to what's his name to and the he, hound to the his, hound and his looks. He's like yeah, he gives us oh. <laughs> great character. Oh, I'm man. sad that Jon Snow's real life wife. Oh, she's dead. Oh, Egret. She died so early. Yeah. You know nothing, Jon Snow. She's smoking too. Yeah, she was great. So who who is the hottest? I know Khaleesi's got. She's got to be a front runner. But who do you think is like? What are Torn you about? And Giants Bane. Giants Bane. Oh yeah, he's part giant. Yeah. Who do I think is is hot? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Missandre, the one she got from Astapor. The I want to say she's. The 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 light skinned black chick. Yeah, she's she's hot. She's hot, very hot. Um, let's see. You're in the mature. I know you're into the mature uh, genre. Who's the mature woman that you're totally into on the show? The mature. So, so like I in the category you have I, I got um, the Lannister. You know, short haired. She's from Three Hundred. I'm forgetting her name right now because it's been a year and a half. Uh huh. What's her Cersei. name? Cersei. She's Cer- hot. Yeah, she's, she's hot. And then there's the uh then there's the Khaleesi. witch. Oh, the, the red, no, no. The red for, woman? This, this is for the mature. Lady Missandre. Oh, yeah. She's the one that was hanging out with... Uh, no, no, that's not her name. Lady Malisara, I think is her name. Yeah, she's a witch. She brought Jon Snow back to life. Yeah, uh, Marjorie Tyrell's hot. Marjorie Tyrell. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. What about Ty- Gra- uh, Grandma Tyrell? She dude, counts as she counts, she counts as mature or is if, that is, is you, that vintage? If you see her... <laughs> Young pictures? Young pictures. Shut up. Look, look you looked her, it up? Look at her. Oh, wow. Not bad. Not bad at all. Wow. Yeah, no. Um. So, but yeah, the Hound is one, is a great character. You know. Who, who's your favorite character? Um, Who do I like? Who? I, there's a couple people I think are G. Um, but I kind of like uh, Jamie. Dude. The Jamie. brother. Because he, he, you, you come off like the hating Kingslayer? him. Oh, dude, he's the man. He killed the king. He's got a hand. Now the the, the sister shit is literal. Like it, it may, for the like five seasons, you are kind of like this. It's creepy. Yeah. It, it's but then something happens and he just ha- he. I want to know if he bangs Brienne of Tarth because they have a relationship there, too. There's they a, have a, there's a lot of like <laughs> sexual tension between him. They and they of go Tarth. at it. Yeah, I bet she fucks the shit out of Brianna Tarth. <laughs> no, she fucks the shit out of him. Mm-mm. I think Jamie puts it down with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> one hand. That's what I'm saying. He's the man. But, you know, a, a, the second my second favorite character is is Tyrion Lannister. Oh, dude, Peter Dinklage is the fucking. He man. makes that show. He, he is funny. He's smart. He's cunning. He talks about witty. chick. Yeah, oh, dude, it's hilarious. He's a guy's guy, and he talks to women as well. And you know, he gets no credit. Like he gets no credit in the actual like role of the story for being a badass. Oh yeah, he's probably like like he's, the stories are almost narrated through him in the Battle of Blackwater Bay. Like he's your seen, favorite scene of all time? No, for Game of Thrones? No, not my favorite scene. Which one is it? My favorite scene is the Battle of the Bastards. Bastards. 
Dude, Damn. that was crazy. Before that was the Red Wedding. Oh, yeah. Before Battle of the Bastards, it was the Red Wedding. These are big moments. Dude, like, when I saw that, I tripped the, fu- the first Red time. Wedding or, uh, or uh, it, Battle of the Bastards? For me? Yeah. I like Battle of the Bastards better. Battle of the Bastards but was insane. The first time you see the Red Wedding, mm-hmm. it's uh, the Reigns of Castamere. Is is the name of the episode because I just watched it. It's, You're such a baller, bro. Thank you for this info. Game of Thrones. It's season four, episode nine. Reigns of Castamere. <laughs> so, anyways, you know that one. Like after that episode, I went onto YouTube and watched uh-huh. like, the reaction videos to that. Right. And people oh, flipped the I, fuck out. It that one because I started late. You know, I, were you on Game of Thrones right off season one? No, I, I bought I it in like in season like five. I came in in like four. Yeah, it took time, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I didn't have HBO. And that HBO, so I'm like, you I know. pay, I pay like nine dollars. And H, there was no HBO, HBO Go or whatever. Go. Yeah. yeah, and it's not on YouTube. It's not on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Is it on Amazon? It's on Amazon. I think you get the episode like a day later. Oh, I don't know. At least is hoping on that. I'm like, we're changing our package for Game of Thrones. It's like how many episodes is the final season? I, I think it's like seven, but. From what I've heard, each episode's like an hour and a half long. Sweet. So there's like many movies. But they, I bet you there's tons of dragon. Because it's, it's all CGI and graphics they had to work on. Well, it's like. And, fin- there, and, and they're so making much, it so good of an ending. so much storyline they have How to many great TV shows, you could go down the list, have horrible endings. For, especially HBO ones. The only other one that's kind of good is Sopranos. No. Everyone dude. talks about Sopranos ending. Fuck Sopranos. What ends well for you? The Wire. Oh, I, you see, that's one I haven't watched. I Dude, watched like one season. I binged that in like a week. How many seasons is it? I don't know. It's a lot. Baltimore Crime, right? Excuse me. Yeah, it was fuck like awesome. What else is it? Uh, I always, I you know, I got into HBO for Entourage. You know, when I, that was one of my favorite. I watched a little. Hey, bit I, I was, t- but at that time, I was totally like a guys' guy weird club, and I was like, Entourage is so cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah, is um Dexter was that HBO? Yeah, I haven't watched Dexter. Dexter, though. the the his sister who's a main character in the TV show, she's got a new TV show on like ABC or NBC. Like the Ranch, I watched the Ranch. That's uh, that's like Netflix though. These HBO one, the HBO before Netflix was Netflix is taking over all the HBO shows. Netflix is taking over everything. Yeah, so look at this might be the last great HBO series <sighs> because it takes. Dude, yeah. first off, is this the greatest TV show of all time? In my opinion, yes. As far as I've I've never seen our country rally around a TV show more than this one. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what that's it's what I that's what I'm basing on. Is like, it the best story I've ever heard? It's pretty close. Pretty like, close. The storyline is fucking awesome. It's interesting. It's hitting my um like I'm it, mature it, enough to enjoy it. It touches you in the feelers, right? Dude, like everywhere. Everywhere. It it satisfies like the sex aspect, the violence aspect. Tons of titty. Like, it's Lord of the Rings meets porn. Oh, my gosh. And for anybody that hasn't no, watched and Lord of the Rings, Like, Skinamax porn. Skinamax porn. Yeah, it's a, it is HBO. It HBO is, used to have the best of it. And so that's how they do it. Actually, maybe that's what replaced it. They're like, hey, we, we got to really pick up our acting in our in our softcore porn. Yeah, right? Let's <laughs> Simulated sex scenes. That's hilarious. Oh, who who Game of is Thrones. your least favorite character oh should be an easy one no you, you you're you not gonna I, I don't know his name because he's not but he's one of the um guy he's one of the old men with the freaking chains around their body or he's like the time keep oh god what is he but they he's always making the bad decision like grandmeister parcel he's a grandmeister the guy with the long beard that yes Tyrion i don't has. like that's exactly who it is yeah grandmeister i hate parcel. him bro yeah shut the fuck up Shut the fuck up. They killed Littlefinger because I hated Littlefinger. I hated Littlefinger. You know what I mean? Great death. That's probably right under the big battles and the big murders. The killing of Littlefinger was amazing. You know, he was a fucking weasel, but he was good at it. Oh, dude. And he was he was trying to get pussy at the same time. Yeah. He used uh, to run. Well, he ran a whorehouse. He ran a whorehouse. He ran a whorehouse in King's Landing. Um, I have two. Okay, give it to me. My two top hated characters. Number one, easy. Joffrey Baratheon. <laughs> who? Joffrey. Fuck who, him. Who doesn't hate that guy? Right? Just such a little fucking Hated him, bro. Bitch. And so the way he died was a, a big moment. Yeah, that was good. Where do you put that? So, like, we're kind of making a list. In terms of Let's, death? Of, of big moments and deaths, yes. So, big. So, we've. In battles. Battles and deaths. Kind of the same as me. 
So really? you, yeah. So for this list, and you have already targeted the first five. Now the Jeremy death was huge. The fuck is wind. That's wind. Are we? It is stormy in the Central Coast right now. Oh, we, we were supposed to storm like, for five days, but now we're just getting little clouds, little sprinkle. So it sounds like a, a cat like outside a cat. of our studio. Yeah, aka my garage. <laughs> so. If in terms of deaths, I put Ned Stark's death above oh, Joffrey's. Very important. Very important. And that hits you in fucking season one. Oh, end yeah. of season one, beginning of season two. So um we've said who we hated. I but, didn't say my second Okay, give me your second one. Catelyn Stark. Really? She's she, a fucking weasel. She gets annoying. She gets so annoying and she ruins it for everybody. Mm-hmm. Like she totally shits on Jon Snow because she's fucking oh, yeah. worthless. She she and then she fucks all her children over. You know? She, I know. Because she can't make good decisions. It's and I hate her. Now, you're gonna have to help me again. He had the filleted man upside down. Was his digital Ramsey Bolton or Lord Bruce? Ramsey. Bolton? Ramsey. The kid. The kid who Dude, fucking he tortured fucked with uh Theon Grey. So you hate him. You have, you have to. to hate him. You have but, to. And the He's way he died so, was crazy. He by dog. He is such a Evil. good villain. He's a great villain. People who've played bad guys, it's a special thing. And he did a great job. But uh yeah, he, he was easy to hate. But I liked how about the cause he was. <laughs> yeah. He would like he he almost got he almost got there. He was so close. He was right there and then he got fucking checked. Yeah, if it wasn't for the riders of the veil coming through Ramsey Bolton would have fucking ended oh, yeah. Jon Snow. Now, and again, you have to help me. So the octopus family, the freaking... That's the Greyjoy. The Greyjoys. Um, not Theon. The son. The, the, the new pirate. New pirate. The guy, oh. he was hanging out with Cersei, and he walked out when they start, made the pl- a deal with... Oh, uh, the brother. The guy is who, that his brother? No. No, no, that's um, Balin Greyjoy. His dad, that's his uncle. Yes. I don't remember his but name. But he's, he's pretty fucking gnarly, too. Yeah. Oh, and that was a point. Remember, they were there's about to be a lesbian scene in the fucking pool in the boat. Yeah. And then the, he fucking attacked. <laughs> oh, good timing. Oh, good timing. man, it was nuts. And that's why we love Game of Thrones. Great how, show ever. How, like, when you hear the intro music, don't you get just juiced? Uh, no, I fast forward. Ooh, you skip? Fuck or fa- yeah. Or you fast forward? It's like three minutes of my life. Oh, I don't want to fucking. I don't want to see it. everything turned into a 3D puzzle. Yeah, I don't care. But the song, the music is pretty tight. Fire and ice, you know. All right, Game of Thrones. Well, that's been a week, um, and the NFL Combine kind of finished. And it, how much did you actually watch? No, dude, it, I couldn't do it. I watched first day while I was making breakfast and holding the baby, and I'm watching guys are talking. And then I watch final day because I got to listen to Dion and the DBs and watch them hip flip, <laughs> you know. Tea but break. what happened is I got on a YouTube little rabbit hole because my father-in-law was in town and he's a track guy. And there was people comparing track runners like Usain Bolt to, you know, Ross from uh, UW mm-hmm. in their 40s and saying who would win a lot of the sports science type stuff. Because I, I wasn't interested in any of the players. It just didn't, it wasn't my... You know, the Combines lost it for me. Really? I, the reps was cool. There was a couple of people who repped out. Like, again, I like to see that. But I know there was a couple 40 times that were impressive from some big guys. To, to me, this year was a definite, like, I don't know, subpar total. Like, as how was whole. the compression gear this year? It was normal. It nothing, was, like, you know, special. sometimes they go crazy and I like it. This year they didn't go crazy. No, it was, it was, it was marginal. Yeah. Um, this year was kind of underwhelming, you know. Like a lot of the big position groups weren't solid. Like the quarterback class is dog shit. The running back class is mediocre. Right. Um, the receivers, there's, you know, other than uh, the DJ Mitchell kid out of Ole Miss, uh, like he's 6'3, 230, ran 4'3, 3, jumped 41 inches. Like he's great in a straight uh-huh. line, but like his, his three cone drill was slow. His change of direction was Who slow. Who had the most reps this week? Uh, some O lineman out of North Northwestern, Oparta or Perta. Something. How many reps he get? Did he get close to forty? I think he got thirty nine or forty one. Off the top, what's the record? Isn't it in the? I f- want to say it's forty five. That's fucking That's insane. A lot of reps. so uh, after we recorded, I think we worked out last Friday. Yeah, 
And, you know, Sean and I have, you know, we've been doing the healthy life, living our best life. And right off the bat, I, I didn't post it. It was very embarrassing of not just Sean, but embarrassing of me. But we busted out, was it 185 on the bench? Yeah. So we wanted to keep it so we could get some reps in. We we didn't want to see a one one rep max. We want to see how many reps we get in at 185. By the way, Josh McClure, great job on the high school gym in the weight room. Oh, dude. It's I, 10 legit. racks. 10 racks. Legit. I guarantee we compete with public schools no. around uh, around the coast. No. Atascadero's kills ours. Well, I, okay. The, the, that's a big one, though. There's public school. Okay, but we're in the top five. I'd say that. As far as equipment and, like, how business it looks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, our gym is that cold iron, like... It's a weightlifter's dungeon gym. Dungeon yeah, weightlifter's, weightlifter's gym. You know what I mean? It's like chalk, rubber, metal, yeah. lift. It's not, like, brand new. It's old school, but... They got some new parts that look really good. So, me and... But... And we threw on some new bumpers. Yeah. You know, so... We threw on 185 because there was a 55-pound plate. Wasn't it? They had different weights. The was it Ivanko or I don't know Rogue. I think it was oh, it was Rogue. Rogue. What are the other companies that do plates? There's a handful. I, Ivanko, I think. Is yeah, one. Ivanko is a big one. Uh, I don't know off the top. I, I know. I always see these companies on the plates. I'm like, ah, 45 pounds. I could give a fuck what it looks like. Yeah. Or did you always have to match your pet, your weight? I have to have the same weights. <laughs> it it fucking kills. Me. So how many did we do? On 135, 185. 185, Sean jumped on the set down on the bench first and he ripped out 13 hard reps and it looked good. It was a struggle. It was good. It, it was, was good. 13 reps. I don't, you know, you guys go out there and try to do it. I'm sure. Paulo, Paulo was impressive. And he I followed back with 13. Of with 13. Own. We actually tied, but I didn't, I didn't want to show the videos because there's too much of both of our underbellies hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guarantee if we do it this week, I guarantee I get 15. Oh, I guarantee I get 15. But I guarantee you I still get more reps at two Okay, so let's you. also, this is what's going to happen. My birthday, when I'm done with my weight challenge, I'm already down like 12 pounds. Which you're killing. It's it's 14, it, you're down 14. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I gained two back after dinner. Oh, okay. I, my meals, call, at the end of my meal sessions, I've been weighing like... <laughs> I've been waiting like so after I eat to weigh myself and see how much actual weight of food I'm eating two pounds and I think I want to cut it down by like half a pound okay and so I'm gonna yeah. be doing that um but yeah so you know after you hit your mark which I think you're gonna crush I think so you know Paulo when it comes to weight loss if Paulo's got enough incentive he murders. It's a, yeah. I don't even know. You know what? Like I'd like to think it was incentive, and I say it's incentive sometimes because we have I have people around me who are helping me out, and I appreciate it. But like something will happen where I'm like, I can't see my dick. <laughs> you got. Like, I can't see it. You got a dicky do. The joke is real. You it's cold do. enough, and my belly's like was hanging over, bro. Yeah. And I was like, this is it. It's too much. You know, you, when you can't see your dude. And then, you know, you just feel uncomfortable when it's hard to tie your fucking I'm, shoes. Dude, and you know what the other thing is, too, is like I, I used to be 1X solid. 1X fit me well. It wasn't barely fitting me. I went to 2X, and I outgrew those things. When I'm at the top of a 3X, and the next step is 4, and you're like, what the fuck? Now you have to special order this. Dude, when I'm getting big shirts, and I'm standing on the, the bottom rim of the shirt and pulling at the top, stretching it out before I put it on. Like for my day, so <laughs> that's where I was at. And then I'm like, okay, Enough's let's enough. do this. Yeah, I'm like, let's do it. There's no holidays that are gonna fuck me up. Yeah, this is the this is the time. everyone thinks like, hey, right after New Year's, it, it doesn't work for me. I got my kid's birthday. I got this and that. Have it's you, right now. It's late winter, early spring. It's the best time. There's it's no the major best time. holidays. I mean, yeah, the next holiday is Easter. I'm a late starter to yeah, tax. You do your taxes. You're like, fuck it. I want to save this money, eat cheap and healthy. <laughs> um, but no, uh, we'll go back and we'll once you hit your goal weight, we'll see what you can pump. Oh up. yeah, so yeah, thirteen reps. That's a good amount of time. I think, and I want to. See, I'm gonna say I get to thirty. I want to bump up the weight too. Let's you, let's bump up the weight to two hundred. No, we'll go two and a quarter. <sighs> Whatever. So we're gonna bump it up fifty pounds, Fuck pretty yeah. much. But. At my peak, two and a quarter was like twenty to twenty five. <laughs> two and a, 
200 gr- yeah, might as well do it in right. You know, the, the official combine, combine weight. Oh my goodness. Now I gotta start doing push ups every day. And you know the funny thing is is watching combines and watching guys struggle getting like fifteen like well, it's linebackers. Cer- certain positions. No, there's there's yeah. I watched linebackers struggle with two twenty five. It's like, dude, how the fuck I mean, I get it, you're fast as shit, but you are sure as shit not strong. It's crazy how it's not impressive. It really isn't. Yeah. Kids aren't doing combine drills, but they don't look like that anymore. Linebackers don't look the same. Linebackers used to be jacked, slower. Now they're fast. <clears throat> now they're jacked and fast. Yeah. Not that super. Like, you're going to say yes, they're jacked, but like, not what we used they're to They're not think. like 250, yeah. just like fucking. They just move way faster. Yeah. You know, the everything everything's better now. Because, yeah, you look at linebackers now and they don't look the same at all. No. Who was the most ripped linebacker and that we could think of off the top? Uh, in terms of which Like, level? just so jacked that he couldn't move. And then, or... <laughs> but, like, James Harrison, like, comes off the top. And he's a D-lineman he, slash he's linebacker. Or outside linebacker. But he's super jacked. Super jacked. He's the last super jacked guy I could think of in the NFL right now. Uh, I don't know. That's too hard to say because everybody in the NFL is fucking huge. I don't, not like him, though. He was... Like, he puts up math. I, I'd like to see him in a competition against anyone else. Fuck. And he loves the weight room. Oh, he is so fucking strong. Yeah. But, like, do you remember Jesse Tuggle? He's played for oh, Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta. Jesse Tuggle was so jacked that I don't think he could move. He was never that good. He probably couldn't wipe his own ass. He was so jacked. What do you call it with the <laughs> ILS? ILS. Invisible. Imag- imaginary, imaginary lat, lat syndrome. <laughs> That's my favorite, dude. So I watched. I didn't watch the running backs. I watched some of the quarterbacks. The quarterbacks were super They said Haskins was okay, and they made Kyler Murray run. I mean, Kyler Murray Kyler Murray's going to be fine. He's athletic enough. He's got a good enough arm. He's, so I love how they show the list of, like, these are the potential teams that want Kyler Murray or Haskins, and they're, like, eight teams deep. Yeah, it's like... A quarter of the league. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> so Pretty bad. My thing is, is outside of... It was nobody really stood out as heads and tails, just great. A couple of guys like looked good, like the kid from Buffalo ran well. He's got a funky delivery. He throws kind of flat. When you're from a smaller school, like a Buffalo or whatever, and you make it to the combine, you're you're in. It's a big deal. You're already in. It's a big deal. Oh yeah. Um, he looked good. Uh, Will Greer, the kid from West Virginia, he looked good. Okay. Um. Outside of that, it was kind of shit. The running backs were blah. When the Alab- when Alabama running back, um, I want to say his last name's Allen. Some I fuck. Yeah, I mean you don't even know his fucking name. I think it's Josh Allen or something like that. <laughs> the like, quarterback from Buffalo. Yeah, it's like you don't even know his name. He's he's okay. It was, there was nothing nothing exciting. There there's no big name running back. The receivers, you know, the Ole Miss kid was was legit and straight on like straight runs. Yeah. But change of direction, not great. Then I went to the D line. I watched the entire D lineman day. Ooh, the D lineman day, heads and tails, punching bag drills. I that's the th- best thing about D lineman day. The hands down best class of the draft. Pro- well, all the Clemson dudes, all the Alabama dudes. It like who else? The um, Clemson and Alabama kids. There's going to be six to eight D linemen from between Clemson and Alabama. They get picked in the first round. Oh. Quinn Williams, the nose tackle, he's probably going to go number one. The Over, dude's a fucking stud. Insane, guys. These athletes are ridiculous. You know, you so that, all four starters from Clemson <laughs> are going to go top 20. Insane. Defense is going to be awesome this year. Like, so I was watching, and um, the guy that stood out for me, small school guy, uh, Sutton Smith, he's from Northern Illinois, the Salukis. Two time MAC play, Defensive Player of the Year. Plays D line. He's an edge rusher, not big. He's like six and six, six and a quarter, like two thirty, two forty. Yeah. Uh, he had like eighteen sacks this year. Uh, he was like I said, MAC player, the defensive player of the year, two years in a row. He was a consensus consensus All American two years in a row. Damn. Yeah. From fucking Northern Illinois, you know he's not going to play D line. He's going to yeah. play an outside backer once he gets to the league, but. He ran like four four six, you know, nothing over impressive in the broad or the or the the vert. Yeah, but the dude has got a motor. I got a question for you, and I know you said you watched the whole D line, but you watched you you skimmed over every other day, right? And you kind of know the people oh, who okay. ran. 
This is early prediction. I'm going to ask you after the draft and and right before the season. This is early prediction. Sean's calling it from deep. This is a half court shot, which has been happening a lot in basketball right now. Ooh. Who is the fantasy rookie of the year? Po- highest point scorer is a rookie in this class. Wow. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. Like uh, I said, it's hard. So this is a, this is a long shot. You could you could go crazy. Who's who's popping in your head right now? I, I want I want to say I want to say the dude from from Ole Miss, Mitchell, the wide receiver, the wide receiver. Because to me, the running backs aren't aren't great. So I, my I, second would be a quarterback. Do you go Haskins or Kyler? You know, I'm uh, just thinking Kyler for rush yards. Does he get the start right away? He doesn't get the start. I don't think he's going to get that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I was going to go to a tight end. I mean, tight end class. The tight end class is pretty good. There's two tight ends in this draft that are like ranked in like of the ninety percent grade. Damn. Yeah, and they're both from the same well, team. Th- they're both from, what? They're both from Iowa. Oh my! Iowa's boys are just insane. Who's the greatest Iowa football player? Uh, the guy that knocks out Alvin Mack in the program. <laughs> the O lineman pulling. McD- I want to say it's in, his name's McDaniel. I want to give it to Iowa for some of the best goal stickers on the helmet. You like the Hawkeyes? Well, they have multiple. They have the lightning bolt. Oh, the lightning bolts, yeah. They have a couple, and I, I like that combo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's... You play. But no, who's who's gone there? Who's alumni? Oh. Is it Jay, Jay Witt? No, Jason Witt's not from, from Iowa. Uh, he was the running back for the Steelers a couple years. Willie... Uh, Fast Willie... Uh, oh, what the fuck's his name? He won the Super Bowl. Willie Parker. Yeah, Willie Parker. Willie Parker was Willie Parker Iowa. was good. Um, There's always good white fullbacks and D linemen. <laughs> always. Schools that have great white football players. Wisconsin. <laughs> All O linemen. <laughs> Nebraska. All D linemen. <laughs> Iowa. All O linemen and yeah. linebackers. Well, I don't know about linebackers, but, you know, Big Ten. You know, thing, the thing I give Big Ten, the Big Ten football conferences, is they produce. O linemen like nobody's business. This the whole NFL probably has a, a. It's it's pretty much basically Big Ten O linemen because that's that's the staple of of Big Ten football is oh, yeah. ground and pound. No, it's good stuff. Um, any other highlights from the the? Oh, how did Eisen do? Rich Eisen. Oh, I did. I did not see Rich run. <laughs> I saw some of it, but I was at work and I couldn't see the bottom ticker, and it didn't show the freaking his time, and I was depressed. But Rich Eisen. Kind of interesting. High low. Is there a bet in, in Vegas for that? I'm, I'm sure. sure there is. I'm sure there is. Um, my 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 overall consensus was the kids from fucking LSU are fast. Did you see that the, the one safety kept on messing up? No. He uh, he was just starting his drills wrong. But yeah, they're fast. Did they, uh, DBU? DBU. I mean, Greedy Williams ran for... Greedy. It was Greedy. Yeah. He, what kind of... Out of all the funky nicknames, or, no, that's his real name. I know, but there's been a, like "ha ha," the Alabama kid for a DB being named Greedy. That's pretty good. I think that's badass. Hopefully, he lives up to it. Yeah. Oh, they do. Yeah. Who's your favorite uh, LSU DB all time? You there's Patrick, and then you got you got I like Honey, honey Badger. Badger. I like the Honey Badger. I know. In college, I love the Honey Badger. Oh, in the pros, I kind of like Patrick. Patrick's way better in the pros, but. Yeah. But Honey, Honey Badger, Badger had a good year with Houston. He's a stud, dude. Oh, dude, that defense is legit. Uh, Jadavion's got some news this year too. He signed an extension, didn't he? Uh I didn't. I didn't see anything about him. I just saw the safety. Oh, he got franchise tagged. Yeah, the safeties that are free agents this year is ridiculous. Who's Land, your top? Land. Well, there's four. There's Landon Collins, Tyron Matthews, Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Landon does not like playing in New York. Well, dude, they're like he's been a three time All Pro and. Dude, the dude's a fucking. He's a stud. baller, and he. What's crazy is when you see you actually see these kids like at the um, Army All American game, and he had a highlight moment. Landon Collins, do you remember when he was at the All American game? Oh, is that when he was, he was declaring? Yeah, his mom. His mom totally showed him up. Oh, dude, she's like LSU forever because they're Louisiana boys. Yeah, and he's at NF, uh, the U.S. All American game, and he's with his family. He's got his whole family behind him. I think at this time. And they were putting on gloves because they didn't have hats or whatever. They changed it up because it's that game, you know. And he says he's going to Alabama. His mom and was his so mom pissed. pissed. Her four-inch fingernails. LSU forever. <laughs> That's fine. He could go to Bama. 
It's like, dude, just support your kid. It's crazy. You see these videos. I think it was last year too, before this time of the year, when the kid from high school declared, and his mama walked out because she didn't go to the school that she took money from a boosters from. Probably. <laughs> And he started crying and he had like a whole breakdown. I'm like in the gym on national TV on your signing day. Shit. You better make the pros. Yeah. You'll never hear the end of that one. Never. <laughs> um, yeah. But so the the safeties are looking good. Yeah. The free agent safeties. There's a lot on the market. It's going to be an interesting year for the NFL. I think so too. It's a, it, I think this is going to be a game changing year as far as like how people look at the NFL and how popular they really are. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of parity in terms of the free agent market and you know who goes where and who stays healthy, but that's that's to be said every year. Um, but the sports world outside of that, it's it's kind of garbage. You know, we're we're going through withdrawals here. You know, we got the AAL. Mm-hmm. I definitely is, have it. Like I I could totally be talking about basketball and LeBron the Lakers, the Lakers suck. and the, LeBron's a terrible the Warriors the you know Warriors are on Kyrie's street. talk right now is happening Kyrie and Charles Barkley like when Charles Barkley is the number one NBA headline you know what I mean I'm good I'm like I like the rookies this year I think we talked about it before and uh like the NBA is, but that's not what you know it shouldn't be it yeah. shouldn't be it's getting ready to roll into baseball season I you mean, know what I mean Oh, yeah, shit. spring training. Have you but, ever been to spring training? No. You have any? Uh, I think uh, Brad from work is going. Yeah, I have a couple of friends that go. I, have no I don't ask. know if that would do it for me. Like, I, I could watch no a couple of the games. Of that. It, it's it's fake games. I don't want to see that shit. But you might run into like Will Ferrell doing a funny skit. I don't give a fuck. That doesn't do it for me. No, it doesn't do it for me at all. I'm not going out there for that. Yeah. I mean. And it's Arizona. Fuck, and it's hot. Dude, shit! Everyone's like, "Oh, spring training." I'm like, mm. "But I got my fantasy baseball draft at the end of the month." Oh, already? Yeah, dude. It's that time, dude. The end of March, baseball. First weekend of baseball is the end of March. What do we do? Do we do something with this the the podcast? We'll think of something. We always do. So, what do you? Now, okay, I have never done fantasy baseball. I'm not a huge baseball guy. How? much do i have to do to be you have to do a lot more to be good at fantasy baseball than football well it's a longer and it lasts season. longer it's a longer season six months it's like, can we create a league we could how many we need six or ten. more ten there's no six man or eight man leagues Dude, that'd be terrible is it terrible yeah it'd be terrible you just play the same guy over and over no, again no it would be everybody's got way too good of a team high points people do like that so yeah. ten people ten people for a fantasy league yeah all right, I'm not expecting you guys all to jump on board and want to be doing this, but if we could do it soon enough, let's do a fantasy football baseball league. Yeah. And you can, can you commission it? I'll commission it. Have you, when's the last time you commissioned a, a fantasy league? I've never been a commissioner. What? Actually, I take that back. One time of a football league. Okay. Okay. But this is a big deal. Yeah. All right. Do you is ESPN the best baseball fantasy app? It's the easiest. Okay. All right. so, What's your fantasy baseball team name? Real important to Paul's game. Uh, the one I have right now with uh-huh. um, the one I'm using, we're Gata D. I'm going to go with my guy, Dion, and go Diamond Turf. But I'm going to go Diamond Tough. What do you think? Sounds lame, but whatever. Diamond Turf. I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. But that's 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 my thinking right now. Because I'm Optimus Prime Time. I got to think of the same kind of Dion the Sure. You did, pl- you know. Sure. I'm, I watched 30 for 30 last month. Good, you should. <laughs> Fantasy you, baseball. You need it. Oh, you, so bad. You serious about doing that? I'll start that. I, dude, out. I'm, I swear, like, who else can we get in it? I, I know, know your cousin will be in or someone else. Who else could, right off the top, would be in for it? Is it for money? Mm, yeah, if, sure. Like, I'm good with putting money in. But I... You know me. If it's for money, I don't do fantasy unless it's for money. Okay, fifty bucks. I'll, I'll do fifty bucks, and then weekly lineups. Okay. First and second place only. Deal. Top ten. And now, can we only, or can I say, hey, best players or best betting? Like you know how at the end of the season they'll be like, hey, this is the best running back. It's hard to say that with baseball because how do you determine who's the best? By batting average or most home runs. Well, then you'd have to say that. But yeah, then, I know before. So you could give them like weekly wins or no, you know, that, that's too much to pay attention okay, to. Okay, okay. Just are you? Do you have Venmo? 
I, I, I commissioned my teams. I Venmoed everybody. Did you really? And I didn't even have to touch anything. I never touched cash. I think one person gave me cash. Huh. But Venmo, I didn't even deal with anything. I, I could get it. Yeah. It's an easy way to do it. You don't have to even see the people. Pretty simple. Yeah. So fantasy at the end of the month? Yeah. What day? And when's well, when's when's MLB kickoff day? Like the weekend of the like the 29th or something of April. So we got to no, do it no, before no, then. Of March. Oh, this month. Yeah, the end of this <sighs> month. Or is this summer, spring? I don't know. <laughs> this is oh baseball. man. We'll figure it out. Keeping up with baseball, but I think it'll help me with my sports talk on baseball. Yeah, you'll actually learn something. Is Dennis Eckersley still paying? <laughs> paying? No, Bobby Bonilla is still getting Bobby paid. Bobby Bonilla is still getting paid. Dennis Eckersley is not playing. And I think this is another episode of Home My Whistle. I do too. You know, it was a good one. Yeah. Not a whole lot of info, a lot of fucking random bullshit. But we hey. did, but it was a good time. Uh, guys, I want to see you try to get into our fantasy baseball league. We'll take someone. If, three on three tournament, Paulo. Three on three. What's going I'm, on with three on three? I'm gonna call Oscar today, tomorrow. I'll make it happen. I got a team, I think. I can get a team. That's not the problem. I know need- four teams. So you have a team. I have a team. I think I'm gonna make David. David has a team. Cabrera. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to make some flyers. Uh, I think we're only gonna have like four teams. You think that's it? I was aiming for thirty-two. But we're going to fall a little short of that. Uh, we're just going to play four teams and have a couple games. I don't think I could go longer. It's a three-game max in a day. You're going to like be so much thinner and fitter. Oh, um, you're gonna, you are too. You know, and so we'll see. It's only going to be like 10 more pounds, 15 more pounds. <laughs> but I guess what? Guess who took jumpers? Guess who took at least 100 jumpers a day, a day ago? This guy. Yeah. I missed like 10 layups. Did you really? It's terrible. Left-handed. That's still terrible. Uh, with good form, I was jumping off my other leg. Dude, I'm money with left-handed layups. Do you jump off your right leg? The correct foot? Yes, I jump you sw- off. You, you, you jump off both those legs. I jump off the correct or you foot. Don't, no, you don't. You jump stop. Bullshit. You jump stop I left-hand layup. I go off the right fucking foot. <laughs> it's left arm, right foot. <laughs> right arm, left foot. Okay. Yeah, work on your, your layup skills. We got a basketball tournament. We're bench pressing. You know what it is? It's Hold My Whistle Fitness Month. Totally. Everyone get into it. Go to the gym. It's not empty from uh, the New Year's rush. You know, I'm intermittent fasting. That's working awesome for me. It's doing really good. Sean's making jasmine rice. It's delicious. (laughs) It's scrumptiousant. You know, get fit. Compete with some friends. Get a goal. Have a good day. This uh, (laughs) This is another episode of Hold My Whistle. I'm Paulo. I'm Foy. You know what's up. Hit the music. Can you blow my whistle, baby? Whistle, baby, let me know. Girl, I'm gonna show you how to do it. And we start real slow. You just put your lips together and you come.